Hey, welcome back nerds. I hope you're all doing well. Let's talk about the latest dev workshop a bit and see what the changes, nerfs and buffs actually do. How do they impact gameplay and actual issues of the game? Here's a quick table of contents and I'll use timestamps so you can quickly navigate the video to what interests you the most. First, melee mod nerfs. Second, weapon changes and their impact. Three, new arcanes. Four, new mod set, galvanized mods. 5. Login items and why I think it's dumb. 6. Overall recap and judgment. Yes, we are going to judge. Before we dive in deep, my name is Swag and I make random videos on Warframe. If you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe for more gaming guides, builds and discussion videos just like this one. I also started streaming again and will soon move over to YouTube. Right now I don't really have a schedule, but that will all come together once the move is done. Right, let's start off with the melee mod nerfs. This is probably the biggest topic for most of you Wukong mains, since some of the most used mods have been touched. First change is about Berserker. Berserker currently gives you 30% attack speed, capping at 75% for 24 seconds on a critical hit. Now if you know anything about attack speed, you'd know that you only have to hit a larger group of enemy once to gain the full stack of attack speed. Obviously, that is broken. Even though it's fun, that's not how an attack speed mod should work. So the changes made are 35% attack speed capping at 70% for 10 seconds on a melee kill, which is a reasonable change in my opinion. It makes sure that there is an actual condition to the buff you receive, which is to kill an enemy or two. Another change is that the mod will be renamed to Berserker Fury and you can no longer stack it with Fury. If we're still able to stack it with Gladiator Vice or Quickening is not clear, since no information was provided. All in all, it's a good change, or small nerf, to Berserker. The added on kill conditional in my opinion isn't a real issue and reducing the attack speed by 5% is negligible since we can still stack it with Arcane Strike. Next up is Blood Rush. Blood Rush will receive a 20% decrease in critical chance that stacks with your combo multiplier. Going from 60 to 40% in one go. I personally don't see an issue here. It's a good nerf to a mod that was single-handedly too strong already. The reasoning provided being that achieving consistent red crits now needs combos of arcane's abilities etc is a bit wonky though. Not a whole lot to say here, it's a solid nerf. Condition Overload, or rather Condition I've been too powerful for too long. Condition Overload goes from 120% melee damage per status type to 80% melee damage per status type affecting the target and has a maximum of 3 status types it'll apply to after the change. While I personally believe that the max status type addition is a bit weird and might have been a little bit too much, I can see why they did it. The whole priming meta is now completely ingrained in the Warframe system of doing damage and nerfing it. Overall, for melee weapons, is one of the only ways to ensure more variety in weapons used. What I will say though is that according to the Death Workshop notes, the max 3 status types condition will not be added to the mods description in game, which I detest. Having to look up stuff like this is tedious and it would just make sense to add it in the description. So please do that DE. Now will this dethrone condition overload Blood Rush and Berserker? Unlikely. Even after the nerfs these mods are still extremely strong and will probably continue to be in the meta for a long while. I question the fact that Weeping Wounds hasn't been touched though. 40% status chance on combo multiplier is far too strong, especially considering that we can stack this effect 12 times or 11 times, but I digress. Next up is weapon changes. Here are the biggest changes. Glaive's throwing windup speed will be doubled from 0.6 seconds to 1.2 seconds. Apparently, this was done because players were accidentally throwing glaives while using normal combat or because they couldn't quick throw. It is also supposed to add better decision making which I won't judge. This change alone doesn't mean too much to me personally and if it offers better playability, why not? I must add that I've never had an issue of accidentally throwing a glaive when I didn't want to. But if other players do have that issue, and they seem to be a lot, I might see it as a reasonable change. The changes I'm not happy with, however, are damage reductions across the board. There's a limited amount of glaives that could actually hit hard, and this change makes the already garbage glaives even worse. RIP Glaive Players. Now to the nerf everyone actually cares about, the Kuva Nukor nerf. DE has finally pulled the plug on the insanely overpowered Kuva Nukor. Changing the chaining between enemies from 4 targets to 2 is a solid start and opens up a wide variety of other choices, like the Atomos, 
permanent splicer, and so on. Will the Kuva Nuker still out damage the rest? Probably yes, because of the added mods and arcanes, but I might explain that later. A welcome nerf in my eyes and something that should have happened a long time ago. Now onto the secondary and primary arcanes. There's a set of 3 arcanes to be farmed for primary and secondary weapons. They have the same stats across the board, so I'll only go over this once. Arcane Merciless. On kill, you receive plus 30% damage for 6 seconds, which stacks up to 12 times, coming up to 360% more damage, plus 30% reload speed, plus 100% ammo max, and this arcane is meant for the ARs and AoE weapons. Arcane Deadhead, even though they should have called it Arcane Deadshot, in my opinion. On Headshot Kill, you receive 120% damage for 24 seconds, which stacks up to 3 times, coming up to again 360% more damage. Plus 30% Headshot Multiplier, that's quite nice. Minus 50% Weapon Recoil, also nice. Deadhead is supposed to become the Marksman slash Sniper Rifle Arcane. Arcane Dexterity, on melee kill, you receive plus 60% damage for 20 seconds, which stacks up to 6 times, which also comes up to 360% more damage. Now these arcanes can be equipped on any primary and secondary weapon, however they need to be unlocked with arcane unlockers. It's a good thing to note that kit guns will receive a second arcane slot for this. Obviously these items are garnered to the people who have been playing for a while and that's okay. Offering some form of conditionals in addition to your existing mod set is quite nice, however I'm unsure if the added damage will make a difference. Though this is something I can't judge right now, since there's no testing to be done yet. Therefore, I'll leave it as is, and probably come back to it at a later point when the update has been released. What I question is how the on-kill effect will be implemented. Will it be a global on-kill, or on-kill by last or first damaging weapon, or on kill but the effect only applies on the current equipped weapon. Unlike what others say, I feel like things like this need to be clarified straight away. Just saying on kill isn't enough with a game that has more variables than a Rubik's Cube on steroids. That might just be a personal gripe, but speaking to many other players it wasn't clear from the get-go and I hope this gets clarified. These arcanes can be farmed on Steel Path and have a 100% drop chance from Acolytes. Furthering the on-kill conditionals with the new mod set, Galvanized Mods. Specifically only for rifles, shotguns and pistols, we get some new mods with the on-kill conditional. Without the addition, these mods are slightly worse than their normal counterparts, however with the condition met, you'll gain a substantial increase in stats. Ranging from 40% crit chance when aiming for 12 seconds, stacking up to 5 times on headshot kills. 30% multi-shot for 20 seconds, which stacks up to 4 times on kill. 40% damage per status type for 20 seconds, which stacks twice on kill. To 30% Projectile speed slash beam length for 10 seconds, stacking up twice as well on kill. I like that conditionals are finally taken serious and can't beat the fact that this might all be due to Ludin's promotions of his own ideas. While I think that more interesting and probably better conditionals could have been added rather than the same stat that is stackable for X duration on kill, this might be a step in the right direction and more enjoyable or fun conditional mods will be added. I have two gripes with these mods though. Number one, if you're going to release mod sets like these, why not include all primary and secondary weapon types? There's no mentions on kunai, there's nothing for single fire bows, etc, etc. Obviously, melee mods weren't added. It would have probably been too much of a clusterfuck, however the absence of all weapon types being included is something they should have thought about and get the mods ready for those. Number two, the acquisition. While it is true that these mods can be traded, as can almost all items in the game, however, putting them as a reward for Steel Essence in the Teshin story, in my opinion, is a further attempt to revive Steel Path, which has been quite dead for a while now. And yes, I've tested this by looking for squads on all nodes across the board and multiple times during the day for three days straight. I've only been able to find five random squads. Those five random squads were found on Disruption Nodes and predominantly on Heleni Saturn and Hydron on Sedna. So if a new to Steel Path player wants to start farming Steel Essence, they will have some issues in regards to being able to survive 
while effectively farming. All the while veterans or people who've played the game for a while can simply take Korra, use the bossman method, link in the description below, and farm copious amounts of steel essence. The gap between those two is just too big in my opinion, but we'll see how that plays out when the update hits. The last workshop topic are the login rewards. All players, MR5 and above, receive 5 build forma and a 3 day affinity booster. Players who own a Kuba Nucor receive an extra 2 build forma. Players who've owned, converted or have an active lich get 1 requiem ultimatum which is a new item that taunts your lich or queen into battle. Lastly, players who have converted or vanquished a lich will receive the new Requiem wildcard mod called Ool. That sounds kind of cool. <laughs> While rewards like these are always nice to have, I can't shake off the feeling that these were only implemented to sweeten the deal for a melee slash specific weapon nerf. Giving players who own a Kuva Nukor, a weapon that is getting nerfed to build formas, looks more like an apology to me than anything else. Now someone once said, give them crop, give them seeds, so they may grow and yield nourishment. When reaping season comes, bleed them dry. I'll let your imagination go wild on what that means. In my humble opinion, DE should have just communicated the changes and left it at that. It leaves a foul aftertaste and it's something no developer should ever do. Just ask yourself the following. If you're going to spit in someone's drink, do you think giving them an ice cream after that will calm them down? I don't think so. However, that's just my opinion and you might think completely different about it. Which is okay. I want to emphasize that my opinion doesn't mean I'm right or that it's the only way to think about something. If you agree with me, that's cool. If you have a different opinion, that's cool too. Just let me know in the comment section below. The overall scenario of people laughing at other people who have different opinions or scrutinizing them either in-game, on forum, or even in real life, however, is something I've seen a lot over the last couple of days. By normal players, and even by people who cover Warframe as content creators, and I regard that as the most toxic fucking behavior you can display. Not agreeing with someone is fine. Going after those people for the sake of laughing at them for how wrong they might be, or because your opinion is different, is something I don't roll with. The same goes for content consumers who think it's their given right to be assholes towards content creators simply because they cover the game. For clarification, this is not towards a specific person. This is my take on it across the board. If you feel attacked by this, then in my opinion, you should take a minute to self-reflect. Rather than getting defensive straight away, if you feel super attacked by it, feel free to DM me on Discord and we'll talk it out. No problems at all. Right, with the TED talk done, here's my verdict. Overall, we can say that some of the changes are heading in the right direction. While I personally expected a more direct approach to more mods and also damage types, it's safe to say that these might be subject to change in the future. It would have been enjoyable to see changes to impact, puncture and stances in a more grand rework style, but that takes time, so it might still come. The added arcanes and mods do change the damage output of some weapons, however it doesn't change any of the core issues we are faced with like power creep or having to use specific mods to even be able to get to the same level as melee damage. The unkill conditional is boring at best, however I can see a trend coming where more interesting conditionals roll in, so I'll see it as a baby step in the right direction. To shorten it, nerf to melee mods Good. Nuker nerf. Good. Login rewards, while appreciated, are unnecessary and feel like an apology. All in all, these changes will probably not change as much as I had hoped for. I might cover the helmet and other changes in another video though, because this one is already way too long. But that's just me. If you enjoyed the video, do leave a like and make sure to subscribe with notifications on so you never miss new builds, guides and discussion videos. Also let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts on the workshop are. Do you like the changes or not? Feel free to let me know. Stay safe out there, Tenno. Later.